when the James Webb Space Telescope fixed its instruments on the red dwarf Proxima Centauri, 4.24 light years from our planet, astronomers hoped to edge closer to resolving one of humanity's most profound and enduring questions ever asked, are we alone in the universe? Proxima b, an exoplanet orbiting within the so-called habitable zone of its stellar parent, long fascinated scientists because of its Earth mass and the tantalizing prospect that it could harbor life. Its proximity and rockiness made it a natural choice. But even the most hopeful of the astronomical community could not have imagined what Webb's advanced suite of spectroscopic instruments would soon reveal. What started as a humdrum scan of atmospheric data became a potentially paradigm-breaking find. The telescope didn't simply register a few intriguing chemical signatures. It discovered tantalizing, converging sets of evidence for biological activity, evidence that life might already be present on our galactic neighbor. The breakthrough started with a campaign of infrared spectroscopic observations made with the Near Infrared Spectrograph, NIR Spec, and the Mid Infrared Instrument, MIRI, two of the most advanced instruments on board the James Webb Space Telescope. These enabled scientists to look into Proxima B's atmosphere with an unprecedented level of detail. For the first time, human beings could analyze the chemical composition of a potentially inhabited planet outside the solar system. And what the instruments showed was more than interesting, it was astounding. The analysis of the atmosphere did not just indicate the continued presence of simple gases such as carbon dioxide or minor levels of water vapor which might well have natural geological or chemical causes. Rather, it showed the continued presence of methane, oxygen, and ozone, all together in appreciable amounts. On Earth, this particular combination of gases is kept there largely by biological means. Their stable presence together in a planetary atmosphere is very hard to sustain abiotically, particularly over long timescales. Methane, for example, is chemically unstable in the presence of oxygen. Without an ongoing source to replenish it, methane would quickly decay. And yet, there it was, balanced and enduring. To further support the evidence of biological activity, Webb's observations showed seasonal variations in the levels of these gases, variations that track the seasonal carbon cycle of a familiar Earth. As Proxima B orbited its host star, certain biosignature gases rose and fell in measurable, predictable cycles, suggesting biological activity that was sensitive to cycles of light and heat. These weren't isolated spikes or mysterious glitches. These variations conformed to orbital mechanics with spooky consistency. The implication was striking. A living system appeared to be coupling with its world in a persistent and multifaceted manner. And if that was not enough, Webb's exquisitely sensitive photometric arrays picked up on strange surface reflectance patterns, variations in albedo that changed in sync with fluctuations in the planet's light exposure. Areas of Proxima B's surface would become darker and lighter with time, a pattern not easy to explain by atmospheric processes or geology alone. Rather, these patterns appeared to suggest surface structures that varied as a function of stellar illumination possibly in a manner similar to the way photosynthetic life bursts and declines on Earth in response to sunlight. A few scientists suggested that alien plant-like life analogs or microbial mats might be growing and shrinking with the special light cycle of Proxima b. Such a notion is at first glance skeptical, but it gained solid credibility upon the discovery of yet another remarkable trend in the data, a red-edged spectral signature. The red edge on Earth is a characteristic reflectance feature of plant life, especially chlorophyll. It is the steep rise in reflectance as plants absorb visible light and bounce infrared. Although Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star producing much less visible light than our sun, there was a chance that life on Proxima B had developed photosynthetic pigments to suit its reddish spectrum. This red edge-like signature in the data very well might be photosynthesis, though perhaps through a completely foreign biochemistry. Additional perspectives were provided by Webb's temperature, atmospheric pressure, and planetary equilibrium modeling measurements. With transit spectroscopy and radiative convective simulations, researchers pieced together a probable climate profile for Proxima b. The evidence pointed toward a planet with a fairly temperate equator, with surface temperatures ranging from 5 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, well within the parameters conducive to liquid water and, conceivably, life as we know it. 
Furthermore, the existence of water vapor, cloud cover, and spectral signs of rainfall regimes indicated an active hydrologic cycle. It was increasingly apparent that Proxima b may not only be habitable in theory, but habitable in the real, biological sense, a planet with rain, clouds, evaporation, and potentially even standing bodies of water. The size of this possible discovery cannot be overstated. None of the individual indicators, atmospheric gases, temperature ranges, photometric data, would be enough individually to prove life, but when combined they constituted a convincing story. Statistically, the chances of all of these biosignature traits arising independently on a clean planet are virtually zero. Combined, they indicated not only habitability, but the existence of an active, dynamic biosphere. Slowly, and then abruptly, agreement came among astronomers, astrobiologists, and planetary scientists. The clues were pointing to the fact that Proxima b was living. The consequences of this insight extended far, far beyond the boundaries of astronomy. From a biological perspective, the presence of life on Proxima b would mean that life is not a rare cosmic fluke, but perhaps a frequent result of planetary chemistry. It would mean that biology arises wherever conditions are even remotely suitable. Earth, previously thought to be a unique oasis in an otherwise primal desert, would be relegated from the crown of biological singularity to just one of many examples. This would utterly redefine our knowledge of biology, evolution, and the conditions for life. Astrobiology, previously pushed to the periphery of science, would be front and center as one of humanity's most essential areas of research. Scientists who long had hypothesized the potential courses of evolution for alien life suddenly had a rich lab data set to play with. Questions that had until then existed only within theoretical modeling had empirical support. How could life develop under the persistent flare activity of a red dwarf? Would subterranean biospheres thrive under radiation-shielded crusts? Would extraterrestrial life form pigments attuned not to sunlight, but to red-shifted stellar emission? With Webb's results, researchers started constructing sophisticated models of evolution for Proxima b, speculating how life would adapt, evolve, and survive on an alien world altogether different from Earth. And yet, the most profound effect of the discovery was not scientific, but existential. For millennia, humanity has struggled with the question of whether we are alone in the universe. Philosophies, religions, and worldviews have regularly placed Earth at the center of creation, the sole home of life. To discover even microbial extraterrestrial life would require a fundamental overhaul of that worldview. The idea that there is life elsewhere, not in some far-off galaxy, but in our galactic backyard, shatters the anthropocentric perception of the world. It promotes humility and wonder. It questions religious dogma, philosophical constructs, and cultural assumptions regarding human existence within the universe. Even more deeply, the concept of a second genesis, life that developed entirely separate from Earth's biochemistry, would have new questions. Would this life employ DNA or a simulation? Would this life share the basic molecular building blocks with Earth life or be an entirely new type of biochemistry? The responses to these questions might rewrite the definition of life itself. Technologically, the significance was equally deep. The finding of a living world so near Earth turned theoretical engineering challenges into immediate priorities. Interstellar travel, once regarded as a fantasy of centuries to come, turned into an imperative technological target. Initiatives such as Breakthrough Starshot, which envisions the sending of gram-scale probes to Proxima Centauri at 20% the velocity of light by laser propulsion, gained new prominence and funding. A Proxima B mission from robots moved from science fiction to a near-future engineering guide. Money flowed into radiation shielding, self-navigating systems, sophisticated AI systems, and long-distance communication data compression. Proxima B emerged as the target of humankind's next great space race, not to colonize, but to make contact and learn. Scientific fields in general were affected by the ripple. New disciplines emerged, xenobotany, exoecology, alien climatology. Whole conferences were held to decode Webb's information, and degree programs in interstellar biosignature research started appearing at universities. 
Laboratory simulations of Proxima-type environments popped up worldwide, exploring how Earth extremophiles would react to analogous conditions. From quantum biology to modeling synthetic life, the quest for alien biology fueled a scientific renaissance. But the discovery's impact reached still farther, to art, literature, music, and the shared human imagination. Authors started writing speculative fiction based on the actual data from Proxima B. Artists envisioned what its landscapes, living things, and even civilizations could be like. Philosophers grappled with the morality of contacting or observing alien biospheres. Cultural changes started to happen, as human beings no longer found themselves at the center of things, but part of a grander, cosmic narrative. Despite its proximity, Proxima B remains, for now, out of reach. But it is no longer an abstraction. Through the eyes of the James Webb Space Telescope, we've begun to know it intimately, its air, its climate, its seasonal rhythms. We've seen its clouds, traced the cycles of its atmosphere, and glimpsed the possibility of life itself on its surface. Something on that world is active, changing, adapting, cycling. Whether microbe or intricate, familiar or completely extraterrestrial, it is not quiet. And for the first time in human history, the quietness of space has been shattered. The legacy of the James Webb Space Telescope has been irreversibly altered. Once known largely for gazing back into the universe's first seconds, it now has another claim to fame, the tool that possibly solved the oldest question ever posed by humanity. It did not merely gaze at galaxies, it heard the breathing of a planet alive. It did not merely count starlight, it discovered a second Earth. And in so doing, it didn't just alter what we know, it altered who we are.